founded in 1971, the East African Civil Aviation Academy serves students from all countries across East Africa and beyond. Every year, between 60 and 100 students are enrolled. Since the collapse of the East African Corporation in 1977, the school has been run by the Ugandan government and recently, cabinet resolved that the Minister of Works takes it on. The challenge the school has been having is the status. The school status has not been clear, but recently uh, the, the cabinet uh, approved a memo which will make this academy semi-autonomous. The school has nine aircraft, with these five XUWD being the oldest one. Before training in planes with advanced technology, such older planes with analog systems provide a real test to the students. We begin normally with the analog, then we move on to the, uh, the, the, the G1000, which I think you saw later on. Then from there we go on further now to the twin engine. So it is a procession. We begin with the oldest, which I could say is the most reliable. Then we move on to the slightly newer versions, which, uh, which are over the six. We caught up with one of the cadet pilots, Monica Nabakoza, who has 53 flight hours under her belt. Uh, we are going for a flight, a flight we are going for circuits, that is touch and go. We come, land, and then uh, increase power and go around again. So after a certain number of, of hours, as the student gets more confident in the flying, then we find that we now release the students to go solo. Two, three. The cadets have to take some theoretical lessons in class before they can start flying. This is a simulator. As you can see, it looks more like a, a cockpit of a, a real plane. And it's from here where the students actually uh, get the basics of flying the actual planes. Before you pass the test here, you can't proceed to fly a real plane. The revival of the Uganda Airlines and the subsequent purchase of a number of airplanes of different sizes and specifications has opened up more possibilities for the students. Well, on these people who, who got jobs from airlines, a quite number of them they are all busy of this school. Mm. Uh, that means that is an indicator that we are getting quality training. When the pilots live here, they can compete mm. on the international standards. With the training here, it enables us to fly the bombardiers with the type rating that takes at most six months. We are operating the six, the session as I, uh, I mentioned, a grass cockpit with modern technology. We also have the beach, the beach baron, which has the modern avionics. So we are moving actually with the moving technology. Unlike other flying schools in the region, this one also boasts of airport facilities. The Charlie takes that on special from current position to the airspace. Away from flying, engineering is another crucial department at the school and it provides a steady flow of aircraft engineers who are employed all over the region. They have training aeroplanes which they use for their own but when they come here it's specific because these are live aeroplanes used for actual training. We also, we also maintain the aircraft we use for training so it's the second area which is also approved now. We also have an approved maintenance organization. One must have two principal passes in physics and maths and undergo an aptitude test before they can be admitted to the flying school. Upon admission, it takes two and a half years for one to acquire a private pilot license. The entire course costs $42,000, which is approximately 158 million shillings. Ali Mivole, NTV.